everyone, Jonathan and Molly here, and welcome back to Savoring the Magic. We are two siblings who share a love of Disney film history and general nerddom and all the details in between the makeup, modern day magic. That's right, and today we are back in Magic Kingdom and we are going to do our next installment of our Main Street Window series. So, come along on this excursion with us. So the window we're pointing out today is on the second floor of the Emporium and it reads Dolls by Miss Joyce, Doll Maker for the World. It also mentions that Joyce Carlson has shops in New York, California, Florida, Japan, and Paris. So before we get to her time at Webb, we're going to share a little bit more about her. Joyce was born in Wisconsin in 1923 and she moved to Southern California with her family in 1938. She graduated from Santa Monica High School and then followed a friend of hers to the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank in 1944. Her first job was a simple one. A job in the traffic department delivering pens, pencils, paints, and brushes to the many animators. However, she definitely didn't stay there. She was recognized for her good eye and steady hand, so about six months after starting, she transitioned into an inker in the ink and paint department. She would work there for 16 years and would end up working on such iconic films as The Three Caballeros, Cinderella, Peter Pan, and Sleeping Beauty. Well, on our way to where we're going, we just saw the best character interactions because... Uh. The stepsisters. Oh my gosh, they're so funny. But anyway, we are walking this way because we know that Joyce uh, contributed to a lot of films throughout the years as an inker. But one that we know for sure is a classic attraction here at Magic Kingdom, and that is Peter Pan. That's right. So let's go honor her by taking a fly through Neverland. All right, let's do it. Come on, everybody, here we go. Every time I ride this, all I think about is how much Walt loved this ride. Oh, yeah. I'll be humming this song for the rest of the day. I know. There's Ariel. Ariel. So the 1960s brought a lot of change throughout the company, starting with the way that films were made. At the studio, inkers were being replaced by the new Xerox electronic process, which transferred pencil drawings directly to cells. 101 Dalmatians would be the final project that Joyce got to work on before leaving the ink and paint department and moving to WED Enterprises. There were huge developments in the theme park side of things because Walt was keen on using their talents at the New York World's Fair. With over 140 sponsors participating in the event and the massive cost for pavilions, Walt counted on huge corporations looking for a way to make their pavilions stand out. 
In his mind, their advancement in audio animatronics and their cache of successful attractions at Disneyland might just be the thing corporations were looking for. And of course, he was right. Disney would end up creating four different attractions for the companies, including Pepsi Cola to the benefit of UNICEF. Walt envisioned a small boat ride about children of the world for this particular pavilion. Mark Davis drew the initial concept art and his designs reminded Walt of Mary Blair's style. She is clearly the artist that we most identify with It's a Small World for her unique style and for being a phenomenal colorist. And she became the art director for the project. Alice Davis would be brought on board to design the costumes for the dolls. The Sherman Brothers, of course, were tasked with writing a catchy song that would embody the heart of the attraction. Harriet Burns would be pivotal in making the models for the attractions, and others like Joyce Carlson would become involved in the planning and execution of it. In addition to helping create the dolls and the costumes, Joyce would help match and create the colors that Blair picked. She also helped with the pieces within Small World that weren't necessarily figures, like the giraffe and the Africa scene. Joyce was also among the small group of artists that helped install It's a Small World in New York. Like so many, Joyce was not limited to merely one project. She was also involved with creating scale models of the appliances and sets featured in Carousel of Progress, where she worked closely with Imagineer Leota Toombs. They would literally use chewing gum, wires, and whatever they could find to make these models happen. She would help get Small World adjusted and settled to Disneyland following the World's Fair. And when it came time to recreate It's a Small World for Magic Kingdom, of course, Joyce was tapped as a supervisor. In addition to her innovation and resourcefulness, she had an excellent eye for color. Her focus was on color mixing and the consistency of paint and painting on different surfaces and materials. She was a master, and the next generation of wet employees like Kim Irvine and Maggie Irvine learned a lot from her. Carlson created models and sets for all sorts of attractions throughout the year, from the Tiki Room to the Pirates of the Caribbean, and of course, the Haunted Mansion. However, it's her work with Small World that would truly define her career. She would end up helping the happiest crews that ever sailed come to life in Tokyo Disneyland, as well as Disneyland Paris. Hence her window staying there are locations in New York, California, Florida, Japan, and Paris. In 1982, following her 10-month stay in Tokyo while working on Tokyo Disneyland, she relocated to Florida. She continued to work with Disney on various projects, and she even continually contributed to It's a Small World, helping to develop new figures to represent Israel and Korea. So in honor of her enduring contributions to a small world, let's go ride it. All right, maybe we'll have audio this time. The last right. time we wrote it, we did not. We had the spooky overlay. That's right. <laughs> also known as no music. It was weird. That's true. I hear it. Joyce would say they were all her kids, so she couldn't really pick a favorite, but she always had a particular fondness for the European and the can can dancer. <laughs> I 
right, those windmills don't get out there. She helped plan those. Joyce ended up working as a full-time cast member for 56 years. In fact, she was the first woman to hit the 50 and 55 service milestones. She ended up retiring as a full-time cast member in the year 2000, which is the same year she was inducted as a Disney legend. However, she would continue to work part-time until 2006, and she even mentored until 2007. Joyce passed away in 2008 at the age of 84, but thankfully we get to remember her and all of her contributions through It's a Small World, 
through her main street window, and even through this little mural in the Emporium. So we hope you guys enjoyed our second installment in the Main Street Window series. Uh, and let us know, is there a name listed on one of these windows that you want to know about next? Uh, leave it in the comments. If so, we will be slowly but surely making our way through these windows. That's right. So thanks for joining us on today's excursion. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, let us know your thoughts. And we have videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday. That's right. So until next time, keep, keep savoring, savoring the, the magic. magic.